All right, so problem F2-3 says determine the magnitude of the resultant force and its direction measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. So over here on the diagram, this is the positive x-axis. And once again, since we're asked to find the magnitude of the resultant force, we need to apply vector addition since the resultant force is going to be the sum of the two forces given. As you can see, I called the 800 newton force F1 and the 600 newton force F2. Since forces are considered vectors, this is vector addition. And once again, you have two options for vector addition. You can either use the triangle law or the parallelogram law. And in this case, it's going to be easy to use the triangle law. So using the triangle law, we're going to start off with our force F1. We're going to add F2 onto it, starting from the head of F1, and then draw FR from the tail of F1 to the head of F2, completing the triangle, and then throwing in the angles that are given. So this is 30 degrees, clockwise under the x-axis. Then since F1 is directly vertical, we assume 90 degrees. So this top part is also 90 degrees. Now if we go ahead and call this angle theta, then we know that theta plus 30 degrees is going to equal 90. So hence, theta equals 60 degrees. So I'm just going to write it on the triangle. And now I'm just going to redraw the triangle for simplification. So this we know is 800 from the 800 newtons. And this length is 600. And this is FR. And over here the angle is 60 degrees. So that right there is our triangle. And now as you can see, we know two lengths of this triangle and one angle. So hence, we can use the cosine law to find FR. So that is the equation. And all of this is roughly 721.1. So hence, the magnitude of FR is approximately 721 newtons. So now we need to find the direction of this magnitude. And again, it's measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. So here on the drawing, this is our positive x-axis. And that is the angle measured counterclockwise. So since we're looking for another angle, we can go ahead and apply the sine law. So for instance here, let's call this angle alpha. And then the angle from FR, let's call it phi. So therefore, applying the sine law, we will get sine alpha over 800 equals sine 60 degrees over 721, which is FR. So note that FR is across 60 degrees and 800 is across alpha. So that's how we got the equation. And isolating sine alpha, we get sine alpha equals sine 60 over 721 times 800. So now we want to take the sine inverse of the right side. And the right side is equal to 0 0.96. 09. So alpha equals arc sine of 0 0.9609, which equals 73.9 degrees. So now that we know what alpha is, we need to find what phi is going to equal. So now redrawing the triangle once again. We know that this is 30 degrees. And this part right here, if we split the triangle, is going to also equal 30 degrees. And this angle at the bottom is phi. And this entire angle here is alpha. And hence, this angle here is phi due to alternate interior angles. Therefore, alpha will be equal to phi plus the 30 degrees. And solving for phi... Phi will be equal to alpha minus 30 degrees. And substituting the 73.9 degrees for alpha, we will get 73.9 minus 30, 
which is equal to 43.9 and hence phi will be equal to 43.9 degrees and that is the direction of fr measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis